Please yeah. do reach out. And again, if you disagree with anything that we say, uh, we frick, write a piece for the website. You yeah, know, we'll post it. So, um, the next segment, we're at about 53 minutes. Okay. So, the second hour, we're going into um, the conservative leadership race because that oh, happened. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Pierre Polyev becomes leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition. That's right. So, I guess kicking off from Pierre's first week as um, leader. The night of the election debate, you were at a fashion show, and I was, I was live tweeting you the results. What do you think about just the results? 68% of the points. He swept like every riding. He won every riding. 70.7% of the votes. Basically, 71% of the vote. Of the popular vote? Yeah. Oh, damn. You know who the. Okay, so I broke this down a little bit. I wrote an article for the site. It's called something along the lines of. Uh, so Pierre Polyev is now the leader of His Majesty's uh, loyal opposition. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. Um, but I, I break down the numbers a little bit because there's some interesting stuff there. So I'm giving these all off the top of my head. So I apologize if I get anything slightly wrong, but I think I have the numbers down. So popular vote wise, because the Conservative Party, they have a point system. It's geographically weighted. Yeah. It's 338 ridings. It's not a popular vote, but we still use popular vote as an indication of mm -hmm. overall support, right? Yeah. So Polyev got 70.7. Sheree got 11.6, okay? 11.6? 11.6. Of the popular vote. Leslin Lewis, 11.1. She was 0.5% behind Jean Charest in insane. the vote. However, she lost the points 16 to 9. Yeah. So the point system, obviously, it's electoral college. It boosted Charest's numbers by yes. fifty percent, literally. That's why the point system and exists. And it suppressed Lewis's numbers by about 16, 17, 18 percent. It's the boost the centrist candidates, and if anything, Pure benefited from that too because he was the centrist candidate. Too, kind in a of, way. but it still hurt his numbers. If it was just a pure popular vote election, he oh, would have yeah, won no, that's true. even right. more, You're two percent right. so more. So boosted, it, maybe not centrist, but mainstream. It very slightly scratched like Polyev. Mainstream. It hurt yeah. Lewis a decent amount, and yeah. it benefited Polyev extremely. Like if you're a friend, if you're not a French candidate, <laughs> a French candidate, <laughs> like no, I wouldn't call him French. I'm just saying for argument's sake, if you're a not mainstream candidate like Lewis or Baber or even Agentson. Like the point system is made to screw you over. Oh yeah, big time. Aitchison got screwed. He got one point zero three percent. Yeah, <laughs> and like, Baber got some, five percent. You need he some, broke five percent. You need some clout in the party to have the name recognition to have enough points in every single riding across the country, right? Yeah, like it's made to keep the institution within the hands of a select few of people. <laughs> yes, yes, you know? yeah. It's so. it's directed democracy. Yeah, exactly. Definitely not direct democracy. <laughs> but slightest. directed. Yeah. There's yeah. a guiding hand just kind of nudging things along. The invisible hand, maybe. Uh, yeah, not always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so Baber got 5%, Eichson got 1%. I yeah. was really happy to see that because I was worried that Baber would be at like one, two, maybe three yeah, percent. five is good. Five is respectable. It's what the PPC got in the last federal election. Yeah, so, so yeah, good checks. for Baber. Yeah. Um, congratulations, Dr. Lewis, for running a great campaign. Just wrong race. Yeah. And I guess I got to eat my words because the, um, yes the articles no, I though. put out before it was... Um, Leslie Lewis could actually win. But you said could actually win. <laughs> yeah. And the case you outlined was actually very good. Yeah. The fact that she didn't win doesn't mean that your argument was false. And no. we still acknowledged the whole time that Polyev was probably going to win. Yeah. So you so, don't, anyway, you I'm, I'm defending you preemptively here. Thank but you. appreciate it. <laughs> you know, I take my L's graciously, you know. <laughs> um, so I guess you weren't surprised that he took it on the first round as handedly as he did. I was a little bit surprised. Just but the, 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 I thought we were going to be in like the 50%. Like 55, range. 60? Yes, okay. Yeah. 68 <laughs> to 71? Jesus that's Christ. The blow, it's fucking that's blown the blowout the fuck of the century. That's like Germany 7 1 against Brazil in the World Cup. What level. was the whole media narrative that they're still running through to this day? That Pierre Polyev can't appeal. Oh, yeah. He can't appeal to mainstream Canadians. Like, Literally okay. wins every riding in Quebec. Can Jean Charest six. appeal to mainstream canadians I'm not, like I'm not really not. so the charay people have this argument that charay polls better 
with yes. Canadians as a whole and Paul yeah. Yev. And they've been putting out these suppression polls on the daily through the entirety of their leadership race. The god-awfully yeah, wrongly... Of, of dubious quality. I yeah, know saying that, you know, this poll shows that, you know, most Canadians prefer Sheree, or this poll shows that most Canadians will be uncomfortable with some with a leader who um, openly supported the convoy. You know what I mean? Like, suppression poll after suppression poll, and it didn't do but jack But if you shit. look at the raw numbers, like, yes. if you just look at Leger, okay? Yeah. Sheree would have needed all of Brown's support to beat Polyev with a general electorate. Yeah. Polyev was still beating Sheree quite handily by like at least five points yeah. in a general elect like a general poll. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's assuming zero support from like Lewis Baber supporters, et cetera. So Wait, that's say that again. <laughs> so Brown plus Sheree. Oh yes. Like tie Polyev with a general yeah, electorate. Yeah, yeah. That's no Lewis, no Baber. Yeah. No H. Yeah. Not that it matters. Yeah. Um so that to me suggests that Sheree is not actually that much more popular than Polyev with the general electorate if he can't even win with the mm. general electorate. Now the other thing, Sheree polls better with liberal members. That is true. If yes. you're a member of the Liberal Party, <laughs> you responded more favorably to Jean Sheree when you were polled than you responded to Pierre Polyev. But how many people who are not even members of the Liberal Party, let's just say they vaguely identify as liberal or left of center, how many of these people would actually vote for Pierre Polyev? when it came yeah. to that in a general election i say the percentage is not more than like not i'm not even saying like in the middle people who are undecided i'm saying people who actually identify as liberals how many of those people would even vote for jean charret even though he's a red tory and exactly. he's going to basically give them a lot of what they want they're not going to vote for him because he has a c in front of his name yes literally that's the whole point. anyone but conservative abc that is the predominant political culture in huge swaths of this country and it doesn't matter how red a Tory you are you are never really going to change these people's minds and i like that you brought up patty b because um there's this hilarious article. founding member of the pennant <laughs> patrick brown <laughs> pretty much yeah in spirit there was this um article that came out that said internal conservative party of canada documents show that patrick brown only sold sixty-two thousand memberships 41 thousand of those being in Ontario after he claimed to sell 150k oh I heard 175k wow yeah yeah that's shameful so <laughs> so Patty B takes another L like chalk L, it up guys the L train just doesn't stop no man. it really does stop <laughs> got kicked out of the race two months ago yeah he's still taking L's like, you just can't stop meanwhile every single nearly pretty much every single one of Pierre Polyev's memberships I forget how many he sold but they were verified 312,000 yeah they were verified by this article I think yeah so so I guess the next angle to talk about with the conservative stuff is backlash within the party against Polyev and yeah. we have a, a medevac helicopter ahead of us there yeah so if you hear a little bit of noise we apologize but we got lapel mics so fingers crossed I'm interested to see how this sounds in post, actually. Yeah, it should, should be, you know, all right. I'm sorry, I'm where, where was I? on my phone as well. Oh, thank God, okay. The backlash in the party. Oh, right, party okay. Party of one, I guess. So, <laughs> Patrick Brown and Jean Charest, although Charest oh, was a little true. bit classier about it, at least publicly, because he had yeah. Brown to play the attack dog role for him. Yeah. Um, they were basically playing slash and burn, hit and run with the yeah. party. and <laughs> smash and pass <laughs> <laughs> and patty b was saying shit like i'll run under lewis i'll run under baber i'm not running under polyev which yeah. again makes no sense because both baber and lewis are to the right of pierre polyev so like i don't know what you're on there patty b but anyway um and you know oh they're God. saying I, we just can't support this party yeah. and blah 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 so now it's actually happened polyev's won other yes. than patty b who's out well Jean Charest has returned to private practice, which <laughs> he's returned to Huawei. <laughs> we called that. I saw comments saying go under on his Twitter saying go back to Huawei. <laughs> That's funny. Or was it no, it was the lady, was it Sue Ann on the True North? Oh Sue Ann. <laughs> yeah. They brought it up and she was like, go back to Huawei. <laughs> It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, that's right. You know, as I actually, I have to really pat ourselves on the backs here because at no point during this leadership race did we ever call Jean Charest the China candidate or yeah, the Manchurian we didn't. candidate. We avoided that angle completely. 
because we're he, such responsible people. Not even, I think he conducted himself in a way where it really didn't even occur to my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he didn't make it obvious if he is the China candidate. I don't know. They're not like Justin. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's at least a... You know what, Sheree, though? And we, I, I had many issues with Sheree during this campaign. You can read all about it on the site, pennant.inc. We covered yeah. the conservative leadership stuff pretty extensively. Um, but you know what? He's a smart guy. He ran a good campaign. Obviously, he was never going to win. He was friggin' yeah. delusional. Yeah. Built to win is like the most. <laughs> that, that was his slogan. <laughs> Built to like win. Like a Chevy? <laughs> Built to get 11.6% of the popular vote, you mean. Oh, my God. Uh, despite being the most, like, well-known nationally politician probably like in the race. the Pontiac of politicians. <laughs> When's the last yeah. time you've seen someone driving a Pontiac? Who do you know who drives a Pontiac? They don't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, but still, Sheree is like, you know, at the end of like hockey playoffs where they come and they shake hands. Yeah. I would shake, I'd his, shake hands with Sheree. You know what? I, do, I disagree with you about a lot of stuff, but you know what? It was yeah. a good fight. You tried. Exactly. Nice try. Little delusional, but <laughs> yeah. you know what? You spoke well. You represented yourself better than this I suspected isn't like you would. like a Jeb Bush situation. It's he not. Better, he, much better he did him. not. Yeah, you're right. But it's still a pretty big loss for well yeah red tory inc oh sure yeah they're on life support they really are and uh okay well, sorry so guy, yeah the lead again. so the notion was that there'd be some kind of caucus revolt or something among red tories and the michelle remples of the world would yeah. get in a big huff and cause all sorts of problems yeah it seems like that's not going to happen alain ray reyes yeah reyes like yeah um is the only MP, it seems, who has decided to no longer caucus with the Conservative Party. He's now sitting as an independent, and he says that he is still committed to fighting Justin Trudeau's inflation yeah. as an independent. So yeah. he's still probably going to vote with the Tories mm -hmm. on most stuff. Yeah. Um, so this whole red Tory revolution, if Polly have won, never materialized. Kind of yeah. like with Trump. Yeah. Everyone was like, and again, <laughs> please don't take the headline here. Alex compares Pierre to Trump, well, you know, no. But um, Trump became the president, effectively the head of the Republican Party. Everybody said, oh, all the Romney types, they're going to leave, yeah. whatever. He had some retirements, Corker and Flake and stuff. But for the most part, what happened, the party at least pretended to get behind the MAGA agenda. Yeah. And the same thing is happening with Pierre Polyev. 100%, because they know where their bread is buttered. Yeah. Literally, they have, they have most memberships out of any political party in Canadian history, over 670-something thousand, right? Yeah, I think 675, <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Like, that's insane. That's more than half, that's three quarters of a million yeah. people. You know what I it's, mean? It's, no, it's it's huge. Yeah. So, like, they'd be dumb to not get on the train or GTFO like the Alan Reyes guy did. And then there was that very petty kind of thing. Um, he said he was targeted, Alan Reyes was targeted by Tory text message campaign to get constituents to pressure him to resign. So apparently the Tory party was sending texts to constituents in his riding to to pressure him to resign his seat. <laughs> so he sits as an independent now. And pretty much the CPC has disavowed this. And, you know, like, what do you think? Is there, like, I... <laughs> We're still at the he said, she said phase yeah. at this point. I haven't reviewed the evidence formally. Oh, um, I have no doubt that it happened. I'm just wondering why. Was it just some lone wolf intern or was it like... I just don't understand what Pierre Polyev has to gain from making a concerted effort to like bully <laughs> yeah. this guy. Yeah. It's just so unnecessary. Yeah, it's probably some like back office kind of shit, I guess. You know, shenanigans a la fucking, what's his name? Fuck. He, he made a statement, the, the, the Lord of the Dark Arts. Oh, Warren Kinsella. Warren Kinsella yeah. tier kind of shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely Kinsella-style politics. Speaking of Kinsella, I forget what he said, but it was some asinine shit. Man, <laughs> we should start a political party just called the Kinsella Party. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, what do you, this Riaz thing, obviously it's not, there won't be a red Tory exodus. The news here is not that Reyes left, it's that nobody else followed him. Yeah. Because that's always the thing. When you have one defection, it's a lot easier to be the second defection or the third defection than it is to be the first. Yeah. Nobody seems to be taking the opportunity to be the second defection. Yeah. Um, 
So I guess I could go through some other stuff. I guess Polyev has unified the party. That's the headline here. Exactly. He actually has unified the party. <laughs> and at least the parts of the party that are disunited with him in some ways are not raising a fuss about it. And they're just accepting that they're in the backseat right now. Yeah. And speaking of unifying the party, oh what about God. the prospect of unifying the parties? So as soon as Pierre Polyev won, um, Mad Max of the People's Party... Maxime Bernier basically came for his neck. <laughs> you know, I saw he's been tweeting Good. at him. He should. Absolutely he should. I forget, man, I forget the exact tweet. I for some reason I didn't link it here. But he's he's openly criticized him. You know, yeah. what I mean? it's be, oh, it was about the 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 thing that happened two years ago. <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> basically indeed. saying that like Polyev was only pro freedom or pro the freedom movement. And when it became politically convenient. Yep. Which is true to a degree. That is I completely true. true. And yeah. a big part of the reason why I just can't get myself too excited for Polyev. Yeah. Even though I know he says all the right things. Yeah. I know intellectually, ideologically, he would be taking this country in probably a much more coherent direction. Yeah. Than the, the past government. Per perhaps even than the past several governments. Yeah. But I just can't get myself excited. Because it's, you know, eh, I don't know. They're just, there feels like the other shoe is going to drop and the disappointment is going to hit but maybe it's just ptsd from aaron o'toole yeah that could be it on my part but bernier's job is to hold the conservative party to account and keep them on the right and yeah. don't let them shift with the overton window yeah. so bernier needs to be attacking Polly. he needs to be attacking the conservative party um because that is his job and that is what actually keeps the conservative party accountable to their right-wing base yeah um so I, I have no problem with this, even though I still want, obviously, Polyev to win the next election. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want the PPC to just give up and merge with the conservatives. And that's the thing. Everyone, even on, like, conservative Reddit, seems to be like, wrap it up for the PPC. If you're voting for PPC, you're dumb. You know what I mean? They're going to just completely just get completely swallowed by the conservative party. And that I'm is like, true. I post the comment. I'm like, I don't think so. Like, well, you think that's true? Yeah, I think the PPC is going to take a hit. Well, they're going to the take a hit, election, but I mean, they're not sure. going to dissolve. No, they're not going to dissolve. There's... They're still going to be around. But yeah. the Polyev era is not going to be kind to them. Oh, for sure. Mathematically. But I think, maybe not mathematically, but I feel like if Bernier plays his card right and yeah, continues to do what, he did, what he's doing, he could maintain a sizable kind of niche following. All he needs is one seat. He needs to move to fucking... Saskatchewan. Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray? Fort McMurray. In Alberta? Yeah. Like you've seen polling there? Um, Fort McMurray was the second strongest PPC riding after Bose. And obviously he's not going to win in Bose. What percentage right now. are they? He got like 18% or something. Oh, shit. Fort Mac. So oh, if you okay. just airdrop Bernier there. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Now it's hard under Paul Yev. Yeah, that's the issue. Because mm, now the, they have their Western candidate. Even though Polyev is an Ontario last MP, he's still a, a Western boy. And everybody knows I don't it. know why he ran in both in the last election. <clears throat> like 2019, I get it. But 20 fucking... It's a pride thing. It's his family riding and uh, he doesn't want to give it up. Like, on. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I don't get it. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I, I'm not endorsing it. Yeah. I'm just saying I get it. I mean, look at yeah. Jagmeet Singh. Jagmeet Singh didn't give a fuck. He's yeah. like a Southern Ontario guy through and through. And he's like, yeah. oh, I'll just run in BBC, Burnaby, Burnaby yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're the leader of the party, you got to do what you got to do. That's what you got to take one for the team. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, everyone is pretending to be something. Like, like you said last time, right? Polyev is an Albertan pretending to be an Ontarian. Yeah. Krista Freeland is an Albertan. Is, is an, <laughs> yeah. She's uh, an Ontarian pretending to be an Albertan, kind no, of. No, I think a reverse. Or, yeah. Well, so, okay, Freeland was is from alberta pretty yeah. sure but culturally she may as well be like born on oh, the yeah. intersection of bloor and spadina like delivered at that intersection well, polyev is from ontario but culturally he might as well be well he Florida. grew up in alberta but yeah. he's from a franco saskatchewanian family he was adopted he was adopted yeah except i Anyway, um, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. But, but uh, Polyev and Freeland are equal and opposite. That is yeah, our point. Yeah. One is, uh, you know, the the Alberta transplant in Ontario, and and yeah. vice versa. I wonder if the lighting is gone by now. It should be. I have flashlight. Oh no no no! Sorry, the real comparison. It's Freeland and Harper. 
Yeah. Because Harper real was from Ontario yeah. and then only became a Westerner after he dropped out of U of T. Mm. Um, whereas Freeland is like the reverse. She dropped the Westerner act and then went to U of T. Yeah. Know, wherever it is that she went. But uh, yeah, anyway. So before we wrap up the Polyev conservative topic, I also want to mention Mrs. Polyev. Um, ah, yes, his secret weapon, Anna Polyev. Yeah. And I don't know, did you see any of her speeches? Like her speech on the No, night? but I heard people talking about them. And the one story I heard the most about was the story about her intercepting a heckler. Yes. And then talk, talking them down from the ledge, basically. That was, and, that was in the camp during the campaign. Yeah, I saw the video of that. Yeah. She like took the lady by the hand and was just explained all the WEF conspiracy talk about Polyev, how he was on the website and she explained they explained that like you know he wrote an article and they reposted it basically and no she is politically gifted like i think she's the closest thing to fuck it i'm gonna say it not politically or morally but hillary, hillary clinton. clinton like just her her convention speech that she gave mm. where she i've never seen a spouse introduce a husband at a political convention firstly in Canada, at least in recent years, and that speech actually being arguably better than the husband's speech, you know what I mean? Because she's just talking about how, you know, her family's from Venezuela, and, you know... They Good left... anti-communist credentials. Yeah, they left communist Venezuela for a reason, and, you know, she speaks French beautifully, you know what I mean? Wow. Like, it's just pronunciation on point, like, it was a fantastic speech. Really talked about, like, you know, being pro-business, pro-opportunity, pro-immigration, from like a pro business and opportunity perspective, like solid, she is a gift and an asset to him and they need to continue to lean onto that. And like I was saying to you, I was texting you saying like, it's nice, you know, to it be, would be nice to have a prime minister who actually loves his wife. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's not been that, a while. Not that in Canada really, oh, that's really bright. Does yeah, this help, got do it. you think? <laughs> what do you think? It is pretty bright. But I'm just wondering if I wear my sunglasses is gonna like lens flare like oh shit yeah I don't know I'm just worried about like the dark I guess I'll try not oh, to no, shine no, no, it directly no, that's fine. in our eyes it's all good yeah but like you know pretty much it was not that in Canada we really care about the family value thing like in the states where the states the first lady is an actual role in Canada first lady role doesn't really exist They're we tried just, that a little bit with sophie yeah and it we just, tried to give her a first lady role and it didn't, whereas laureen yeah, harper didn't, didn't really take. have one at all no she was kind of like living at the shadow laurier apparently yeah, and stuff you know, which so. makes sense right i mean yeah it's give or take but i could actually see them being like a traditional first family and people want that especially in yeah. a time of uncertainty you know the queen's dead inflation recession like people want to feel like they're part of a family you know and they have a beautiful young they family kids you know he brought his one-year-old son to his um first caucus meeting and they cut a birthday cake that's right him. cruise yeah cruise. another guy from alberta <laughs> yeah cruise polyev which is a very you know baby cruise <laughs> it's a very kind of double whammy kind of name <laughs> but yeah i just think a lion ted honestly well that's what i'm saying like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. It's interesting, you know, like I think she has a bright political future ahead of her if she so chooses. And I really think her being very included is kind of a soft launching point for her. She wants interesting. To. Yeah. Well, if we look at uh, Joe Clark. Yeah. His wife had a political career. Really? Um, and uh, Wait, was she, elected? she kept her maiden name. Yeah, she was. Where? In par not par was it Parliament? Yeah, federally. Really? Yeah, she was a federal MP. I'm MP pretty of sure. What? I don't know the writing <laughs> off the top of my head. Okay. But well, I mean, oh, I guess you're Google. using your phone for light. I'll look it up. Yeah, let me see. I'm trying to remember her name. I've done this before like too, Margaret probably on the McTeer? show. Like I Maureen McTeer, I yeah, think something yeah, like that. Yeah. Damn. And did people like that? I really don't know anything about it. Yeah, her. I think I think reactions at the time were mixed because you had people maybe a little bit more traditional at the time who wanted her to, you know. It's just calling her a first lawyer. lady kind of thing. I don't think she had a political career. She definitely ran at least once. She wrote journals. She's the author of three books. She is professor. 
Oh, she was not elected in her riding. Okay. Oh, okay. She was a candidate in Carlton, Gloucester. Oh, there you go, right in our backyard. Yeah, hoping to get elected alongside her husband in 1988. Okay. Yeah. So it's happened before. Yeah, like there's Olivia Challenge Jack Layton is probably the most famous recent. Oh, well, that's that's true too, but you know, I mean, Olivia Chow kind of went down in flames a little bit there. Well, she resigned and then she ran for Toronto mayor and came in like third. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, not a great look. That's the thing. There's the space for a political spouse who actually has a political career. You really got to walk the open. line. Yeah. Like, it's not really a thing in Canada because political spouses aren't really a thing in Canada. Yeah, that's true too. You're <clears throat> but right. if anyone does it, it could be her. I'm putting all my money on mm. Anne, on Anna Polyev. So it's like the Michelle Obama running for VP. Exactly. Fantasy. But real. But real. Yes. Yeah. I could see it. Yes. Now, the, the the only question is, though, they do have a, a young family, obviously. Well, that's the thing. I'm saying five to ten years. Five to ten years. Yeah. yeah I could see it. Yeah. So, definitely in the next campaign, whenever that is, she's going to be front and center. And it will make the whole Sophie and Justin thing, namely Sophie's absence from every conceivable... No, it'll make it so much more conspicuous, the yeah. fact that Anna Polyev is now more visible Like, than... the fact that... Well, is that why Sophie's going to London, you think? It's to, like, remind the public that she exists and Definitely. try to, like, dust her out of storage? De I wouldn't be surprised if Sophie was more front and center the next campaign because she was completely invisible the last campaign. Literally, she came out with Trudeau to um, go to the governor general's residence to dissolve parliament on day one, and then she was gone, disappeared, vanished, missing persons inquiry, yeah. <laughs> Amber Alert, until fucking the election night. Yeah. And even when they declared the queen, um, the queen of Canada, when they proclaimed her at Rideau Hall a few days ago, she was nowhere to be found. He brought their son. Yeah. She was nowhere to be found. So it's like... No, she was a first-term first lady. Yeah, literally, she was a one-term first <laughs> a one -term lady. A one-term first lady. I can't... You know She's what I like, mean? Justin, you have a majority, okay? Oh, minority, I'm out. And we can't, like politics, yeah, it's getting a lot nastier, but it's also getting a lot more personal. And I think in this era of uncertainty, people will appreciate, you know, a f strong family unit. So everyone knows the Trudeaus aren't together. Like, it's the yeah. worst kept secret in Ottawa. You know what I mean? But then again, there's a lot of very badly kept secrets in Ottawa that outside of Ottawa, like, nobody knows. True. Or, like, conspiracy theories that survive predominantly within the Ottawa But this bubble. is one that has crossed over. Like, but that's that one, video yeah. from Canada. No, you're absolutely right. Pretending to kiss each other. And it's just, Well, it's there, there was, like, her snubbing him when he was, like, getting vaccinated or whatever. Yeah. And he was trying to get her to hold her hand and she wouldn't yeah. do it. Like, And I hate that we're, even, like, part of me is, like, man, We shouldn't be covering this, but, frankly. Like, Trudeau could be having, like, I don't know, gay sex with Andrew Gillen <laughs> while smoking meth. <laughs> And, like, theoretically, yeah. we shouldn't care. But we do because it has implications. And this show, I like to think, is not just about, like, the news, but about how people perceive it. Yeah. It's about the narrative. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, whether you like it or not, that's part of the narrative. You yeah. I mean? And it's because they make the big show of having the intact marriage and blah, blah, blah. I think partially that makes it fair game. Yeah. Because you're scrutinizing something that they're intentionally and conscientiously presenting explicitly exactly. yeah exactly you're not saying oh i discovered that you know so and so had this you know whatever affair or yeah whatever. If, if sophie wasn't like on all the magazine car co covers from the beginning and was more kind of hidden like a laureen it, well exactly you know right what I mean? yeah. yeah like because there have been other kind of first ladies who haven't been front and center you know, they they were trying to make Sophie the next Margaret Trudeau. If they didn't do that, put that much effort into <clears throat> getting all this positive PR for Sophie specifically at the beginning, she was at the Wee Days. She was at all this shit. Do you know who Paul Martin's married to? Good example. I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. And that's my point. If it was a Paul Martin situation, then this wouldn't even be a story. Yeah. So that's their fault, honestly, you know? It sucks. It's not fair, but no, you're absolutely you right. I'm game. really glad you're putting it this way yeah. because you're setting very clear rules and yeah. you're following them responsibly. Yeah. I'm not saying anyone should attack her or anything. Like, I don't think ultimately she has no power over any decisions really clearly, but I'm just saying from the media narrative, <clears throat> the meta narrative perspective, right? 
it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a story and it's a contrast that a lot of voters at their dinner tables will be making, you know? It's the whole Hillary Clinton meme of she couldn't control her husband. How could she run the country? Right. Yeah. Which, you Sexist know. Sexist or not. Yeah. That's, that's the narrative that people, that's what real people talk about. Yeah. At the dinner table when they're talking about who they're going to vote for. Unfair, sure, but that's just a fact of life. You know well, what I mean? weirdly enough, too, it's often like the most progressive people who get talk themselves into, no, we got to run a straight white guy because America's oh, yeah. racist. <laughs> or we got to run a black woman VP because America's racist and we want the non racist people to rally around us. Yeah, you know that I mean? too. But I'm even rem- remembering like in the obama era people yeah. were like i don't know we should probably oh, still run a white guy and that's these true. were like leftist progressives saying <clears throat> well that's this. why they got joe whereas you know ironically they need to balance the ticket they don't have the same sentiment in the like the center right because they don't have that insecurity yeah so you can go with like a, i don't know a leslie lewis or whatever and you don't have to have that conversation of like oh is the country too racist or to a accept latino them? woman you yeah know? exactly yeah, it's yeah. only when you're running them i guess as a left of center candidate that it tends to come up yeah suddenly the racists it's it's funny how the racists you know love like diversity <laughs> the so-called <laughs> racist party is you know well yeah sure i mean if, if you want to look at okay so i like i like soviet racism as a topic of conversation because it's, it's interesting right mm-hmm. so the soviets were not racist in the same way that like the the nazis were racist yeah. where they're not you know master race whatever it was more like we're going to use racism as a tool yeah so stuff like forced resettlement ethnic cleansing within the ussr was all just a tool to keep the like percentages of the population below certain points where you know ethnic nationalism starts becoming a concern for the, yeah. the party and stuff like that yeah but anyway we, we're digressing yet again yeah um so yeah, I 